welcome to yet a very special edition of I on 227 with Dr. Johnny Thomas. I'm your in-studio host, Sean Howard. And today we have a great show to which I personally have waited with great anticipation because Dr. Thomas, we have the backdrop of our district here, our students, four of our students here. And just kind of talk to me about how we got here today, for one, because this has been a vision of the district to have the students here, but let's talk about the uniqueness of these four. Uh, we're, we're very blessed to have uh, some wonderful students in our district. Uh, we have some great scholars that uh, have big dreams. And so uh, part of the work in our district is making sure that we create an environment that takes into account uh, their needs, their wants, and their desires to be the best that they can be post-secondarily. And so uh, it's important for us to make sure that we create those avenues where we can hear their voice. And so uh, for me, I get the, young, the wonderful opportunity to work with four uh, dynamic scholars uh, here in our district, and it's actually more than four, um, but uh, these four really have a, a big voice in, in how we move forward, uh, and they, they really help to give me um, some advice. So they work on our uh, student advisory uh, council, or superintendent advisory council. So uh, what we'll do now, we'll just give, ha allow you to self-introduce yourself to our viewers. Uh, and we'll start to our far left with Miguel. Miguel, just tell us your name, your classification, and what campus to which you receive your education on a day-to-day -day basis. Well, my name is Miguel Dixon. I'm in ninth grade, and I am at the STEM campus. Okay, very good. Hi, my name is Kamari Taylor. I'm a sophomore, and I'm at STEM campus. I'm Amari Harris. I'm a senior, and I'm at the FAC campus. Are you about to leave us? Okay. Yes. <laughs> Hi, my name is Anthony Cotton. I'm a junior and I'm from the FAC campus. Dr. Thomas, you know, we've often talked about having students here on the show to talk about their perspectives, their opinions, but you formalize a student advisory council, but more so just their involvement here in that day-to-day -day campus life. Talk about that entire vision, how it's come to fold. Yeah, so we worked hard to try to pull together a, a group of students that were real representative of the STEM campus and the FAC campus. There are two from each grade level. Uh, we wanted to get them together and, and let us know how we were performing for them on their behalf. And so the council has uh, been working for the for better of three or four months now and uh, advising me on how to make the school environment better for them. Um, and it's been, it's been absolutely amazing to have uh, these scholars come in and actually give insight to uh, how we are impacting their lives um, as scholars and as individuals. And so uh, they've been very helpful for us. Miguel, we talked off camera about uh, just your very fondness, if you will, of uh, coming into this particular group and having a voice. Can you just talk about that again and, and how you view the advisory council? I think the advisory council is pretty fun. We have some laughs, we have some food, but we mainly have discussions and a lot of good comes from those discussions. We never like have anything where it's like, well, we're stuck, we don't know what to do. It's usually always like a productive meeting. Great, great. And Kamari, uh, you, you often talk about the productivity and the quick action of the, uh, of the district in responding to those issues. Can you talk about that? Yes, I feel like um, these meetings are very effective on the student body and the staff of our schools. So I think we should continue having them and prote proceeding to get the word out. Very good. And, and Omar, you, you know, you're leaving us in, in a matter of days now. But you know, there's a student govern government association waiting for you down in South Carolina, your new school next year as you uh, advance your collegiate career. Uh, do you think the advisory council will help you propel to how to handle student government affairs in South Carolina next year? I actually believe it will, especially since I have so much experience now and getting to know everybody and how it works. So I believe it definitely will. Very good. And Anthony, in terms of the voices to which the four of you collectively represent in your various classifications, and when you go back and talk to students about what goes on here, it must give you a sense of pride to know that you can go deliver messages and hear the concerns of the students. I mean, yes, yeah, uh, warm and it's good to feel like we matter and that kids know that they can come to us and we can also voice their opinions and fight for what they feel is right as well. Very good. Let's talk, you know, and any, any, anyone can just come out and say, you, you don't have to raise your hand as if you're in class, but uh, 
The four of you have excelled tremendously in your academic careers, and we know the township has done a great job providing you with the programs and academic curriculum, if you will, to help you. Is there any specific uh, programs or associations here on your campuses that you think really help you? Because I, I heard STEM in some cases off camera. Anybody want to take a crack at that? Well, I'll start with mine, the culinary program. Um, I feel like it helps students excel mostly because we have access to the type of kitchen that you really wouldn't have access to unless you were a professional in that field. We have like a restaurant grade kitchen, so we have like every appliance and every type of tool that you can use and find within the kitchen that we have access to from our stoves to our griddle and everything within. And, and Dr. Thomas, Anthony's being modest because I understand he's a good soul food <laughs> cook at home. Uh, talk about that, Anthony, while we're there. You know, you, your family and you come from a family of cooks. How has the culinary program kind of helped propel you to the next level, if you will? Well, the culinary program, one, has helped me learn what to do and how to perfect what I make. And it's also given me the um, resources to try to try new things and it's given me like my license and stuff so that if I want to go out in the world and also make these same things, I have all the requirements to do that professionally. Now, now uh, Amori, uh, you often talked about, you know, where you want to go career-wise. Uh, has the district really helped you in that regard in, in enhancing things to ensure that you have a foundation to get started with? Yes. It started my freshman year where pre-AP classes and my teacher, he definitely helped me set the standards of where I should be by taking AP classes, which is advanced placement, where you get college credit. So you don't have to you, uh, have less money, basically, when you go to college for tuition and stuff like that. So it definitely helped me by taking AP classes for three years and getting the credit that I needed for college. And, and, and the same with you, uh, Kamari. Uh, how ha has it really assisted you? Because you have a strong career path. Let's talk about your goals. Yes, um, the district has very much helped me in so many ways. I'd like to go into aeronautical engineering, and it has assisted me by taking advanced placement classes in my STEM major. Okay. And last but not least, Miguel. I feel like it's helped me because I want to be a biotechnologist and like a science, CRISPR-Cas9, all that good stuff. And I feel like biology is helping me and then something that I'm going to take next year that is more in-depth with biology. I feel like the district's helped out with that. Very good. You know, Dr. Thomas, you've often talked about how the pandemic played such a historic role, albeit positive and some challenging. Uh, and I talked to uh, Miguel, he said, you know, when he entered here his freshman year, he hadn't been in school since seventh grade. And you've talked about the transition. Can you talk about, as you look back over the school year, uh, not just these four, but collectively how the student body has seemed to transition quite well into day-to-day -day academic life again? Yeah, I, th I think uh, we, we all had some significant adjustments that we had to make coming out of the pandemic. Uh, the socialization piece was, was huge uh, for us and for school districts all across the country. Uh, and getting these uh, very talented uh, scholars in one spot and really showing them what it means to be a collective group uh, in an environment was something that it, we had to reteach and those skills had to be practiced over a period of time. But uh, I'm happy to report that uh, over the last uh, few months, uh, we've seen a significant improvement um, in our scholars and in our staff in terms of uh, them connecting and, and being on the same page. We still have a lot of work to do, but we, we are happy with where we are. You, you know, Miguel, uh, you had, again, talked about leaving the seventh grade, waiting a few years to enter high school. Talk about that transition and how foreign it must have been to you, but yet you made the transition, but was it sort of a culture shock to you at first? not having been around, you know, peers for so long? Yeah, a lot of my friends, like, just disappeared because we got switched to new schools, and everybody just felt really immature. It felt like I was in seventh grade, and, like, the rest of the people were, oh, so adult. But then we started to, like, mature faster, feels like, than usual because, you know, we did make a huge jump. 
and and of course, uh, Kamari, uh, you leaving the eighth grade <laughs> and now jumping into what a sophomore season was it? Now that had to have been very uh, significant as well. How did you make that transition? It was really hard, especially with the work and just a lot. And but there are many more options as when I was in middle school. Um, I think we matured well. Yeah, yeah. And we have our senior that's graduating in a few days, Dr. Yeah, Thomas. Yeah, yeah. Amari, obviously you left your sophomore year and now you're here, you are into your senior year. You skipped over that junior year physically in the building, but virtually online. Uh, coming into your senior year, that probably presented some different aspects for you as well, did it? It was very hard coming online from junior year to going to in-person and senior year because we missed a whole year and it was hard to socialize again and get to know everybody again and go back to some things that was normal. But other than that, I feel like it was a pretty good adjustment going back. To yeah, and Anthony, I'm sure you did a lot of cooking at home during the pandemic, correct? <laughs> yeah, you probably tried some new dishes and what have you. Uh, you appeared to have made the transition. I think you were very happy to come back to school, were you? Oh, yes, I actually was looking forward to it and enjoyed this school year coming back in person. Um, with leaving my freshman year, starting off high school, and then coming into what I would say is the most important high school year of all my high school years, it was definitely like sometimes a slap in the face having to deal with the um, classes. But overall, knowing that I'm now going to go into my senior year and I've made great friends, wonderful relationships with people in the school, it was all worth it. Yeah. You know, Dr. Dr. Thomas, you often talked about, again, uh, the role that you wanted the district to play, not only in their day-to-day -day academic lives here during their tenure here, but even beyond. And you must feel very, you know, satisfied, or even more than that, about what you're hearing here today, because this is truly a reflection on you, the faculty and staff on the campuses here that make up Rich Township High School. Uh, just give us your overall feelings and when you hear these particular intelligent, young, bright minds. I think it's the, it's the part of our community that uh, we don't pay enough attention to. Um, as I've said over and over again, the majority of our students are outstanding and they do great things not only in our school environment, but in the communities in which they live. And I think uh, we need to listen to them more. We need to pay more attention to what's happening with them um, and give them the support that they, they deserve. And uh, when, you, when you do those things, um, you get scholars like what we have here today who are on a trajectory uh, that is going to allow for them to be the next uh, line of leaders that come back to our community and it's only gonna help our community grow. Emotionally speaking, you formed a connection with all the students here, but particularly the people that sit on your advisory council. And I know you and Amari have, uh, <laughs> you, you share a close fondness with Amari, but when you see a student such as Amari leave here and go to college, there's an emotional detachment that you have to make as well, and that must be difficult. It, it's, it's extremely hard. Um, you know, they, they push me. Uh, they continue to remind me of why uh, we do the work. Um, and the great thing uh, about what she has done in our district is she's inspired the underclassmen to continue to do that work so that we all, all continue to be the best that we can for them. Um, and so she's going to go and do great things. I'm, I'm not, I, I'm, I'm sad, uh, but I'm really happy uh, for her uh, because I know she's going to, she's going to come back and I know she's, she always tells me she's not going to come back and work for the district, but we're going to find a place for her when she's done with her. And, and, and that's part of, your, part of your mission here, to train the students to come back, correct? We, we, we want to make sure that we uh, bring our talent back to uh, the community uh, so that the community grows stronger um, and we continue to, a cycle of success um, and get people to focus on uh, the positive things that are happening here in our community. Uh, and these, these four scholars are, are uh, a big representation of what, what we are doing as an organization. For those uh, grade school parents who may be watching this program, and when they hear young Miguel, who's a freshman, now about to transition into his second year, what's your message to those grade school students as they, I know they're impressed by what they hear and see in Miguel. Uh, can you talk about what his path is gonna be like for the next three years? 
I'm, I'm really, I'm really excited. And I don't, I don't, I don't think we've shared it with Miguel yet, but we are working on an opportunity that would send him to England so that he can attend summer camp in Oxford. Um, and so getting him out of the country and getting our students exposed at a level uh, which they can't even imagine for themselves is the work that we're trying to do in our district. And so he will, he will continue to grow um, as a scholar, um, but more importantly, he will become a leader fixture here uh, in our organization, as they all are, um, with the hopes of us continuing to ex inspire the next group, the next generation of scholars for Rich 227. And, and it's bodes well because Kamari spoke of uh, going back to the advisory council for just a minute. She spoke about, we brought an issue there, Dr. Thomas heard the issue, you and the administration quickly uh, made an impact. I is that the type of response that you want to continue when you hear students like Kamari? He had a, a beautiful, con uh, well, a legitimate and beautiful concern in a colorful way, but to that end, you, you were able to get it done. Is that the mission and the goal? Yeah, we, we, they, they, uh, they live in the environment every day. Um, we want them to come to school. We want them to be happy when they come to school. And so when they bring a consistent message about something that is bothering them, um, we, we take action. We have, to, we have to move on it. We have to make it better because we want them to feel comfortable at school. We want the school environment to be different for some of them than what they experience um, out in their, in their neighborhoods or in their community. We want, we want it to be a, a safe place for them to be. And so, yeah, we, we have to listen to their concerns. We have to make adjustments. Um, and we have to do it in real time and not wait a year or two uh, to really take action. Because as you know, mm. I, I only have four years with them. And yeah. in some of their cases, I, I've only had two years with them. And they're already, they're already gone because of COVID. So um, we, we have to be nimble. We have to be flexible. And we have to create the educational environment that's going to be inspiring for them because they're, they're super talented. Now, Mr. Cotton here, uh, the cook, if you will, the chef, uh, speaks about the culinary program. And Anthony, he's, he's performed this show quite a few times now. And every time we've had a show, he talks about culinary. And when you hear how he's benefited from the program, to which was your vision plate, if you will, here coming through, uh, how does that make you feel? Because he's taken advantage of every opportunity in that culinary program. So you know, in 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 our um, in our culinary uh, program, uh, we we work to make sure that um, it, it it has the industry standards needed for a student to make a decision about their lives. If they're going to go right out and work in the kitchen, they they've been trained in a way that allows mm -hmm. them to do that. And and so to hear uh, Anthony's story about uh, the culinary kitchen, uh, to see Miguel earlier this year uh, take. Uh, uh, the the agricultural program mm. and help us to move that that forward from a, a student perspective and um, is actually the first charter member of of our our agricultural program um, is just the start of what we're trying to do in creating these career pathways that align to student interests student wants and student mm -hmm. needs. Let me go around the bend here, if you will, uh, for those grade school parents who have. Uh, children who will be lining up to enter these doors. Can you talk about some of the things that you truly, truly admire about the district that just stands out in your mind, the things that you really, really like about coming to, to, coming to school on a day-to-day -day basis? And uh, let's start with you, Anthony. Uh, Anthony is my future replacement, so I'll start with him. <laughs> um, for me, I would like uh, parents to know that um, there's a lot here whether no matter what you want to do there's a lot and there are professionals here that can make you advance to the farthest probably farther than you think you could go on your own and with me it's been multiple people that done that for me so I want that message to be known to everybody that no matter what you want to do there's a lot here that can help you do the best at it and sometimes it'll inspire you to do other things or sometimes it'll inspire you more to do what you already planned on but no matter what you want to do it's going to be great here. Great. And to Catherine College, South Carolina bound, Amari? <laughs> well, I actually have a brother that will be coming here next year as a freshman, and I feel like my best experience here and was be will be knowing the teachers, the staff members, 
uh, custodians, all the people I had met my four years were probably the best thing that happened to me. Because each one have a, gave me a different lesson, a different experience, and I just got to understand everybody better. But as well, I got to meet new people like Anthony and Kamari and Miguel and them. Mm -hmm. So it would probably be everybody I met during my four years here. Great. And our junior bound Kamari? Um, I'd like to say to everyone who's watching, this district has many opportunities, far more than you could ever think. I never thought that I'd be sitting right here, but I just feel like it's just opportunities waiting. And no matter what reputation that we have, we need to put one out there so that they know that we are the best. Into London bound, <laughs> Miguel. What's your, what's your what's your perspective? I feel like everything here. There's a lot to offer, and I feel like even though sometimes it isn't conducted, it is always fun. You like always have a blast, and you always learn something from it. So, you know, the conduction is pretty good, and you just get something from each experience that's available to you. Yeah, he's ready for international studies. <laughs> oh, very good. He, you're going to take soul food cuisine overseas somewhere, right? <laughs> well, look, this has been a blast, Dr. Thomas, and, uh, and this will be a mainstay here on the show, having students come on, talk about day-to-day -day campus life, student achievement and goals. I know we'll have athletes come in in the future, but these four individuals, they really brightened my spirits from the time they walked into the studio here. Is there any lasting impressions you want to just give our audience as it relates to what they see here reflected? I think, uh, I think it, it gives us great hope about uh, the future for uh, not only our community, um, but our society as a whole. Um, you have uh, students of color uh, sitting here that are excelling. Uh, that are doing the right thing, that are living the right way. Uh, and I think we get bombarded with so many messages about uh, the negativity and the negative things that are happening uh, uh, nationwide and in our local communities. Uh, we, it, it sometimes drowns out uh, the scholars and the, the great activities that are happening with the students that you not only see here, but the many others that um, uh, we have that are going to be graduating here this Saturday. So. Really, really excited about it. Well, I want to personally thank Miguel, Kamari, Amari, and the master chef and my future replacement, <laughs> Anthony Cotton. I won't, you can't forget your replacement. <laughs> but I want to thank you for taking the time to come and share your perspective, your opinions, and just your career paths. I think this will be enlightening for our uh, future students who are going to walk through the doors freshmen next year. And I want to congratulate the four of you, not only on the way you've excelled academically, but the way you handled the transition during the pandemic, which is a big assist to Dr. Thomas and the administration. So collectively, we say thank you. And I've been Sean Howard right here on ION227. This has been a wonderful program highlighting the achievements of our future stars, the future generations our students. Once again, I've been Sean Howard right here on I-227 with Dr. Johnny Thomas. And as we always say, keep the faith.